I think we can speak now to the former Chief Constable of Greater Manchester Police, Sir Peter Fye. And Sir Peter, thank you very much for joining us. I mean, that's a very blunt question to ask you. Should these protest marches be allowed to go ahead over this weekend? It's quite a complex area of law, and I think some of the debate and some of the comments from politicians really, in a way, have, have misled the public. There is a particular power for a chief constable, or in this case, the commissioner, to apply to the Home Office to get a march ban. But that is only when there is a risk of serious disorder. In the past, was used for things like the National Front turning up, um, and then the Anti-Nazi League and other far-right groups, and that occurring in an area of high ethnic minority population. Um, so the problem, you know, has been that uh, you know, the police have felt that they didn't have enough evidence of that to justify an application. Any application they'd made would have to be able to withstand a judicial review, which no doubt would have happened. And even in any case, you, know, you can ban a march, but still people can turn up and you're left with an, an even bigger policing problem on how to deal with those people. Um, but as I say, it is actually a matter of the law. And in any case as well, uh, you can ban a march, but you can't actually ban a static protest or a rally. So, you know, even if they had been able to ban this, all that could have happened is that a huge number of people could have turned up and just had a static protest, um, and you can't ban that. The issue here, and it's where it, be, it becomes, in, well, anything to do with the Middle East becomes very nuanced, doesn't it? But part, part of the issue is here, there are people who will be wanting to, to peacefully protest, you know, because of the suffering that Gazans are going through at the moment. But there is, there is an element of this which is pro-terrorist in terms of being pro-Hamas and people who are being anti-Semitic. Now, that, that's not legal, is it? No, absolutely not. But I think, you, in a way, what you've just said shows how messy and difficult and complex protests and the policing of protest is, because absolutely you're right. You often get a huge mixture of people on a protest, uh, some that are you know, under the control or at least the influence of the organisers, so some are, are, are that are not. And that's always a challenge of policing. You've got to try and be, you know, keep the support of those that are there for lawful protest and peaceful protest, and you've got to be able to winkle out and deal with those that are engaging in unlawful activity. But in this problem, again, you're absolutely right. This is such a nuanced issue, an emotional issue around the Middle East. But you've got that sort of division between what is clearly anti-Semitic, what is about protest against the policy of uh, you know, the state of, of Israel. You've got all the complexities of anti-terrorism law, hate crime law, public order law, uh, the law against uh, protest, the law of, uh, regarding policing of protests, which has changed a number of times just over the last year. Uh, and you've got to try and brief officers how to deal with that. Um, there are very strict conditions about when officers can make an arrest and when that's justified. And then they've got to make a decision on whether in a particular cir circumstances it's right to wade into a crowd to try and arrest somebody. Well, that will lead to people that are going to get injured, women, children, and whether we like it or not, how that's going to look on the court of public opinion, because the police are ever, always, always conscious about that. Everybody is videoing this, recording this, um, and whatever the law may say, ultimately it will be judged in the court of public opinion and what the media think and what politicians think about it. So it's an incredibly difficult job for the police today. And they really do need you know, the support of all of us to understand that complexity um, you know, and, and actually, as exactly as you say, trying to deal with all those different factions that are going to turn up today. So, Peter Fahey, we really appreciate your time this morning. Thanks for joining us on GP News. Mm. 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 Yeah, there are well, lots of people have been pointing out that if we were in France, you know, the police would have the water cannon out, wouldn't they? Yeah. We simply wouldn't allow but, it. But do we want to be in that position? No, I don't know whether we do. I have a lot people of respect. Would be very for, uncomfortable. I've got that. a lot of respect for people like Sir Peter making that point, and it's it's a case of saying, well, it's incredibly complex. There's no point trying to turn it into a black and white yelling situation, saying you must ban this. Well, wouldn't necessarily work.